In this video, I'm going to show you how to compare investments by looking at their after-tax rates of return. Note that the same tax rates don't apply to all types of income. Certain investments are taxed at preferential rates. For example, you might have one investment that when it generates income, that income gets taxed at 35%, and you might have a different investment that when it generates income, it's taxed at just 20%. And you want to take these tax rates into consideration when determining the return you're going to get as an investor because the tax rates are going to affect the amount of cash that you're left with at the end of the day. Thus, you want to compare the after-tax rate of return when comparing these different investments. And the good news is it's pretty easy to calculate the after-tax rate of return. You just take the before-tax rate of return for the investment and then multiply it by 1 minus the marginal tax rate for that investment. So let's do this with an example. Let's say that Thomas is comparing three different investment opportunities. Uh, Thomas could buy a corporate bond and earn a before tax rate of return of 6%. Uh, Thomas could invest in a stock that pays dividends and get a return of 4.5%. Or Thomas could get a municipal bond and earn a rate of return of 4%. So then the question is, which of these investment opportunities offers the highest annual return to Thomas? Now, we're gonna to wanna to take into consideration the different tax rates for each of these investments. Okay, so we're assuming here that the corporate bond, any income from that, which is gonna be interest, right? The corporate bond is a company, they're issuing a bond, they're gonna pay interest to the investor, so Thomas is gonna get interest. That interest income will be taxed to him at 35%. Now, when Tom, if Thomas were to buy the dividend paying stock, we're assuming that Thomas would be taxed on those dividends at just 20%. And then we're assuming that Thomas is not going to have to pay any tax at all if he buys a municipal bond and gets interest from the municipal bond. So we have different tax rates for each of these investments and we wanna calculate the after tax rate of return. Now. In this example, let's just ignore capital appreciation because I know some of you might be thinking, well, hey, what about the fact that if Thomas buys a stock, that stock might go up in value a lot more over time than, for example, a corporate bond or a municipal bond. Uh, that's a valid consideration, but let's just assume here that we're not going to focus on capital appreciation. We're just going to focus in this example on the income produced by each investment. So the corporate bond and the municipal bond are going to give interest to Thomas. And if Thomas buys a stock, Thomas is going to get dividends. So let's not worry about like the fair value of these investments changing or, or any kind of capital appreciation. Okay, we just want to focus on the calculating the after tax rate of return, uh, given the, the, these hypothetical tax rates and hypothetical before tax rates of return. So let's go and calculate the after tax rate of return and see what is the best investment. For the corporate bond, we're going to take 6%. Okay, so we got the 6% times 1 minus 35% gives us an after-tax rate of return of 3.9%. So before tax, 6% for the corporate bond, after tax, 3.9%. Dividend paying stock, 4.5% times 1 minus 20% is 3.6%. And then note for the municipal bond, we've got the before tax rate of return and the after tax rate of return are actually identical because there is no tax on the interest from that municipal bond. So. We don't have to worry, so we basically have 4% uh, times 1 minus 0%, so 4% and 4% are after tax and before tax because it's, it's tax exempt income. Now, in this particular example, we see that the municipal bond has the highest after tax rate of return given these hypothetical before tax rates of return, given these hypothetical tax rates. In this particular example, the municipal bond would be the best investment or in terms of offering the highest rate of return and ignoring capital appreciation. Now, if you're wondering, hey, I don't quite understand. This corporate bond has a rate of return of 6% after tax rate of return of 3.9. What is going on here? Well, if you think about it, let's just say that Thomas had paid $100 for this corporate bond. Okay. And so Thomas would get here before tax rate of return would be $6. Okay, so $100 times 6%, $6, $6 of interest, but Thomas would have to pay 35% of that away in taxes. Okay, so Thomas actually receives, if, they, if Thomas bought the corporate bond, $3.90 after taxes because 35% of $6 of interest income, 35% is $2.10. 
So basically, if Thomas bought the corporate bond, Thomas was paying $100, getting $6 of interest income, but then having to pay away to the government $2.10. So Thomas is actually left with $3.90 if Thomas bought the corporate bond after one year, right? $3.90. But if Thomas bought the municipal bond, $100 times 4% is $4. Okay, so even though before tax, corporate bond gets $6 and municipal bond is just four, you don't have to pay any of uh, taxes on the municipal bond. So basically Thomas is left with the entire $4 in, okay? So that's why if you're wondering, hey, this doesn't make sense, 6% before tax rate of return, after tax, 3.9 for the corporate bond, $6 of interest earned, but you had to pay $2.10 of tax on that interest earned. So you're left with your take home, so to speak, is $3.90, whereas the municipal bond, Thomas got to keep everything.